Hey there everyone, Mark like Douglas Bartholomew Reginald Esquire the Fourth here with a guide on how to see what your DPS is. There are timestamps in the description if you wish to skip ahead, but first I want to briefly touch on why you might want to do this, because of a question I get asked a lot. Mac, I don't care about my DPS, I play the game to have fun. Let me play my way, why should I bother with this? I completely understand where this is coming from. The point of a game is to have fun. And when you are in the open world, you can play anything that you want. I used to do open world on a druid build. I never died, but it took 10 minutes to kill some quest bosses. However, when you join a group for 5 or 10 man content, that changes, and here is why. Many bosses in the game have mechanics where you have to do a certain amount of damage per second as a group to not die. The second boss of the Nightmare Fractal on Challenge Mode has a mechanic where he goes invulnerable and he starts channeling a kill the entire room move. There are four mobs around the room that have to be killed to lower his shield and interrupt him. Each of the four damage dealers, the fifth person is usually a healer, will run to one of those four mobs and kill it. Now, the DPS check is not very high, but if you aren't pulling your weight in the group, everyone dies. You literally cannot kill the boss. Additionally, imagine if you are playing with another person that is the same class as you, and they haven't put in some time or effort into getting more out of their character, resulting in you having to do double or even triple the damage or work to clear the dungeon. Even if you're super nice to them, like everyone else on the internet, right? You probably will be hesitant to group with them again. You don't want to put others in that position. There are two main things I'm going to show you. The Arc DPS add-on and how to use it, and the Training Golem and how to use it so you can do testing anytime you want. After that, you can try different traits, runes, weapons, armor stats, sigils, anything you want and see how it affects your damage output. Now, I feel like DPS meters have a bad stigma because people can use them in rude ways. But the reason I show you this is, again, to help you find flaws or strengths in your own builds and improve. Also, let me pause here real quick to say that yes, this is okay to do. As an ArenaNet partner, I have a lot to lose if this was against any rules, and although they do not support these add-ons, they don't forbid them either. They basically look the other way, as if to say, do what you want, but if you have any issues, don't call us. Now, to download the Arc DPS add-on, go to this website deltaconnected.com slash arcdps. Scrolling down, you can see when the most recent release was. You will need to update it occasionally. Scroll down further to the download link at the bottom and click on that. On the next page, you would download d3d9.dll and put it in this folder. Program Files, Guild Wars 2, Bin64. Change the path accordingly if your Guild Wars 2 is installed in another location. Now launch Guild Wars 2 and press Alt-Shift-T to open the Options menu for Arc. You can press Area Stats to see the standard damage meter window up here, and you can move it wherever you want. You can right-click inside that window and change lots of things, but that really isn't relevant to this video. I personally also like to use the Self Stats option, which gives you this little box right here, which allows you to see your DPS or healing per second at a glance whenever you fancy. I keep mine right there. That's it for the ARC basics. Just open that window, or leave it open if you wish, to see the damage of you and your companions on each fight. Now, let's move on to the testing goal. You don't want to just test your damage by attacking a random Dolyak. That will only show your burst damage for a few seconds, which will not represent what you can sustain over a long period of time. At the south end of Lion arch is the entrance to the aerodrome. For those that don't know, this is where you would normally go to do raids. Once you've zoned in, you'll be in here. In the northeast corner of the aerodrome is the special forces training area. This is the testing room. Create a squad, set it to raid mode, and you can zone in. Once inside, run forward until you reach the consoles. Note, first your special action key. That resets all your cooldowns so you don't have to wait on them if you finish a test and are starting a new one, or perhaps you make a mistake and you want to start over. For example, if I click my ultimate here, it's on cooldown for 60 seconds, click special action, it's back up immediately. The golem spawn 
Connor spawns a golem. Yeah. You can pick the size of its hitbox, how much health it has, and then you will want to go to additional options and add conditions to it. Nearly any group of five players will have vulnerability on their target, which increases the damage taken by the target. It would not be an accurate test without this. Just slap all conditions on the golem and then click spawn golem. Now let's turn to the arena console. Any group of five people will have all important boons. You will have might, quickness, alacrity, etc., which will all dramatically boost your damage. Click adjust self, add boons, and all of them is fine. You will have a few extra boons that you would not normally have full time, such as stability and resistance, but that won't affect our damage test. Also, copy the boons to your pet if you are a ranger that is not a merged soul beast. Click return, then click add profession specific combat enhancements. It will say to be aware that deploying this option can lead to unrealistic results. Click I understand. Now I don't recommend clicking all of them because that will be a very unrealistic DPS test. When's the last time you grouped with five people and solved this many buffs? The answer is never. However, I do recommend going to Ranger and adding Frost Spirit and going to Warrior and adding their banners. Most try-hard five-man squads will have those things in them. All that's left is to eat a food buff and use a utility item, and you are ready to wail on the dummy. At this point, do one of the following. Either one, beat on the dummy until it is dead, or two, beat on the dummy until your longest cooldown is available again. Example, if you started with a 60 second cooldown, like my one wolf pack here, the moment it becomes available again, look at what your DPS is without pressing that button again to see how much DPS you sustained over that minute. You can run over to the golem spawner and click remove current golem and respawn my previous golem incarnation to drop combat if you've been beating on it for a while and it hasn't died yet. Maybe you spawned one with 40 million health, or maybe you just needed a break. Okay, so we've done some damage, now you're out of combat. You can see your DPS up here. Left click on your name. That will make this lovely chart appear. This shows how much of your damage came from each ability and a graph of your damage over time. For power builds, it is common for them to be Minutemen and do a lot of damage at the beginning with all of their cooldowns up and then start to go downward until their cooldowns come back up again and then they burst higher again. For condition builds, they often start low and ramp up until they reach a plateau up at the top. At this point, you're ready to brainstorm. Jot down your DPS with your current build, or perhaps take a screenshot of the build you tested with with the test on the screen. Then change something, and try again, and again, and again. Sometimes you can find strange combinations that work really well together and you never realize just how good. Or maybe you copied a meta build from the web but were afraid to try it in a group. This is the perfect place to practice that rotation. And that's all there is to it. I've used these tools extensively to try out different ideas and see which ones were hot or not or anywhere in between. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like for the YouTube algorithm, comment if you have any questions for me or additional input, and subscribe if you would like to see more content. A special thank you to my newest Patreon supporters who help make this content possible, and if you're interested in becoming one and getting earlier access as well as extra videos and extra benefits, there is a link in the description. My in-game name is muckluck.9082 if you need to to reach me there or talk to me live any evening on Twitch after 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with extra streams on Wednesdays and Fridays at 1 p.m. EST. Click the follow button on Twitch to be notified when I go live. We also have two new features, a calendar with a list of all upcoming giveaways, streams, special events, and video releases for your convenience in the description, as well as an invitation to the Bone Zone Discord never before released on YouTube. It is a wonderful community of people, many of which are very knowledgeable about Guild Wars 2 if you have any questions for them, me, or if you would just like to socialize. That's it for today. Happy improving!